Welcome back! Now we're in part two of this afternoon session and I'm going to show you how to apply the beeswax. I think it's important to put the beeswax on cotton string. I don't think that we should put nylon string anywhere near a flame. And also, based on childhood experience, nylon doesn't absorb the beeswax the same way the cotton does. So I, I lit... <laughs> it's so radiant! I lit my beeswax candle earlier. Wow, that's really hard to see. Let me see if I can either change the exposure. Let's see if I take it right down. Can you see the candle? No. If I take the white balance away, can you see the candle? Nope. All right, you're going to have to use your imaginations this time around. There's the exposure. I'm going to take it right down. Does that help? All right. Okay. Maybe if I move this. Do I do? Is there any way to see it? Nope. So there's a lovely candle here with a flame flickering. A little hard to see because the camera is right above it. Makes me wonder if I should put the camera on the table. Let me pause for a moment while I fuss around. Okay. I'm back with the best exposure I can offer for the moment. It will improve with time. So, I'm going to point. This is the flame of the candle. And here's the beeswax. This is the end of a big one pound piece that I had. It really lasts a very long time. Beeswax is wonderful. It's antibacterial. It smells great. It it breathes to a certain extent and it has a really high flash point so you you have to be cautious with a flame always but it doesn't catch fire don't ever use paraffin or in any other wax for this purpose i mean there might be some other natural wax that works and i don't know about it but i do know about beeswax so i cut really thin slices and in the winter time it's a bit colder here so i I heat up the blade. Again, just like when we melt the wax later on, it's really important to hold your knife above the flame. This is the hottest part, but it's also the clean part. If you dip your knife, oops, do you see that little bit of smoke? If you dip it too close, I'm going to wipe it off, it will um, burn and create black soot. It was just a tiny bit. But just stay well above it. And if you don't be scared, but you know, start super high and get a little closer. Always, you know, if you haven't used a candle before, just be set up cautiously. Never ever leave the candle alone. They tend to misbehave if they're forgotten. So I'm just cutting thin slices and pressing them onto the cotton string. And I like to have the wax, I like to have the string thoroughly coated in wax, but not overly saturated. Having said that, if you put too much on, it just drips into the beeswax candle and causes no harm. And, yeah, just put it around. In my mind, I'm doing it evenly, but it, you know, it's, it's just lumped on there. That's kind of... I've done them thin. It looks like a lot, but it's not really that much. And then on the number, my number I reads every... Starting at number one every January, I number them sequentially. And then I put the year on the other side. Yeah, it's too bright to see, but anyway, it's there. I put a little bit of... I, I scrape the bark lightly with the X-Acto knife. And then I write in pencil, and then I put a little bit, tiny bit of beeswax, and that's enough to keep the number safe over all the soakings that you will do with the reed. Okay, so there's wax on ooh, all the surfaces, and now I'm holding it above the flame and rotating. And you don't melt it all at once. You, you heat it up, the heat, the heat builds up, so just keep turning it and it'll start to form bubbles or uh, drops, like heavy drops, and you can 
just rotate it like a chicken on a spit and catch all the bubbles in the string and just keep turning it a little bit. As the wax cools, it will become opaque. That hasn't started yet. And then that's when it's sort of um, room or tepid, you know, just not, it's still warm. When it's absolutely cooled, it will be clear again. And it's very beautiful until you start working with it. And then it, it because it's soft, it'll take the impression of, of the pliers or, or something. But if you ever want to renew the beauty, you just uh, add a little bit of wax or just heat it up a bit. And believe it or not, you can buff the reeds lightly and, and the wax will shine. That's what wax does. Anyway, it's a beautiful, non-toxic way of sealing the reeds. This, my string never, ever comes undone. If, I, if somebody takes my reed and plays it for a year, it might come undone. But then you just, just unwrap it and do it again. It, the wax breathes, so it doesn't really hurt anything. All right, that's it for now. Oh, you can see it before I leave. Well, you might be able to see it. It's starting to get opaque. It looks a bit white. And then here's one that's dry. It comes back to being very shiny. Eh, it's a little hard to see here, but you get the idea. Good luck.